Hello, everybody. I am Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministry, Season 14, Episode 2. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful Tuesday so far. I'm um, a good start to your new year as we get in, in a groove of um, 2023. I'm also praying for all of those who are um, all the men going through Exodus 90. I myself am for the first time. And so prayers for you all. Now, what I want to talk about today is is something that I feel isn't getting enough really attention in, in Christian media as a whole. Um, and it is the recent Joshua Bassett controversy. I use controversy in quotes because it's really not a controversy on Joshua Bassett's end. People turned it into one, if that makes sense. And so I'll explain. Um, so Joshua Bassett is, if you're a young person, right, a teenager, I'd imagine that you know who he is, right? He's very famous. Beforehand, I was kind of indifferent on him. Like, I, I knew him, obviously, but I didn't really... I didn't, don't watch any of the things that he's in. Um, I don't listen to his music, any of that. So I, I wasn't fully like familiar with him, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, he tweeted just five days ago as of when this is posted. So it was January 5th. He tweeted, Jesus Christ is the only way. His death and resurrection are historically documented. Turn away from hate, seek forgiveness, and come home to him. That's a beautiful thing, right? Um, seek forgiveness, come home to him. So at first we would think, okay, this, this is great. This is fantastic. Let's move on story over, right? Well, typically, yes, if it were any other religion besides Christianity, but because it's Christianity, people were really, really upset. And I want to read, um, some of the replies and I want to clarify, I am not reading the replies to sit here and like be a negative Nancy and be like, oh, look at all this terrible stuff. I'm reading the replies because one, I think that it's good for us to understand how a big chunk of society views our faith. And two, um, kind of take a step back and look at the greater issue here as a whole. So some of the replies include um, question marks, um, the girl, someone, okay, even if people are doing this as a joke. It's not funny, right? It, it, someone um, photoshopped Taylor Swift's head on Jesus instead of her. As if it's like, but, but here's the issue with that. If that were any other religion, if they were making fun of any other religion's big figure like that, it would get canceled. It would, it would get called out. Why aren't we calling out that? Um, even if it's a, as a joke, it's not funny. This one was really bad. I don't know what scares me more, if he's hacked or if he's serious. As if it's, it's wrong for someone to be serious about that. Here's Josh. Are you hacked? Um, there's more. Are you for real? Right? Like upset that he's genuinely just talking about uh, Jesus Christ. I'm only going to read a couple more. We have um, Christian phobia. I'm not joking when I say Christianity is to blame for almost every issue in society. Christianity is to blame for almost every issue in society. Um. Okay, we'll go, we'll go back to that one. There's a lot to say about that one. And then we have um, here, um, every single celeb will find a way to be controversial eventually. What bothers me about this reply is as if him coming out and saying Jesus Christ is the only way, that that creates a big controversy for Josh. Joshua Bassett now in a big controversy because he said that Jesus Christ is the way. Because he said that we should turn away from hate and turn to Jesus. That's what he's in controversy for. Doesn't seem like much of a controversy for me. And to say that Christians are the foundation for every issue in society, a lot of people view it that way. They do. As if somehow Christians just are problem creators. The reality is, guys, we know as Catholics that the Catholic Church is the one true faith, right? And there's kind of this idea within our culture right now that we should tolerate all religions, coexist, right? And that's true, okay? That is accurate. I'm not going to preach against that because that's true. We should tolerate all religions, okay? That doesn't mean that we have to agree with other religions. Doesn't mean we have to think we're they're correct, but we have to tolerate them, okay? That's the loving thing to do. Here's the issue, though. Most of society agrees on that, that religions should be tolerated unless you're Christians, Unless you're Christians, then you don't fully count. Christians are not exempt from this, right? It's like, oh yeah, tolerate all religions except for Christianity. We can make fun of those. We can mock those. Guys, it's not just with this Joshua Bassett tweet, right? We see it time and time again. Big celebrities, right? Uh, 
Chris Pratt is one that I can think of, um, is a big Christian and, and came out about how he's a Christian and talked about it. And he got flamed for it and he got insulted to know oh, his church is hateful and all of these types of things. And more celebrities are like that. And we have celebrities um, openly mocking Christianity with Addison Ray, right? I made a video on that um, a couple weeks ago. And then we have Lil Nas X mocking Christianity and, and with this clothing and music, guys. It, it's wrong. It's just morally wrong. And we need to understand that for us Catholics, it is our job, it is our responsibility to defend the faith. Even in a society that doesn't like it. Now, here's the thing. Christian persecution isn't new, right? And when I'm talking about how Christians are treated, I'm specifically referring to um, right now, and then also in this country, because Christian persecution is happening in other parts of the country or in other parts of the world as we speak, physical persecution, right? And it has happened throughout history. Uh, that's a sad thing. But through all of it, the Catholic Church has stayed strong. The Catholic Church will not waver. The Catholic Church will not falter because the Catholic Church is the one true church founded by Jesus Christ. But we see it time and time again that Christianity can be a laughing matter. And guys, there is a way to defend our faith while being loving and non-judgmental of everybody else. People think that you can't have both, right? That you are either um, kind of quiet, timid about your faith, and then you're loving to others, or you're really judgmental, you're super rude, and you're kind and loving. Guys, I I'm not saying that we should just sit here and be rude to anybody who goes against Christianity and go after anybody who disagrees with us and go after all these replies in the comments, right? That's not what I'm saying, guys. That's wrong, okay? We shouldn't do that. What we need to understand is that every single person who commented something hateful, every single person who sees Christians as the root of all evils, they are all created in God's image and likeness. They are all made to get to the eternal kingdom of heaven, just like we are. That does not change the fact that in that specific case, they're wrong. And they need guidance. They need the light of Christ. And we should A, pray for them. And B, not be afraid to stand up and defend our faith and say, hey, I really didn't like what, what, what you said there, right? Sometimes people, you just can't really argue with them. And that's okay. And I would say heavily, the internet is not the place to have maybe a, a, a deep discussion about religion, right? Because it can go out of hand a lot. But we need to understand that if we're just timid, if we're just shy, then things like this will continue to happen and they will only be able to progress, right? There is a way to be calm, but not timid. Calm, but not timid. And we lose that. And we lose that time and time again. Ultimately, Jesus was mocked when he was here on earth. He continues to be mocked to this day. And we as, as Christians, we as baptized Catholics, right? It is our, not just like a good thing for us to do, it is essential that we defend our faith because here's the deal. We should be living in such a way that anybody who knows us knows that we are Catholic. We don't have to go and give a round of homily everywhere we go, but they should know that we are Catholic. And then with this, we kind of become, let's say there, there's person A, we'll call him John, okay? And John isn't Catholic. But we're friends with him, right? It's, it's great to have non-Catholic friends, right? I have a, I have a lot. Um, John is not Catholic, but knows that we are. We then become, and, and we're maybe John's only Catholic friend, we then become the representation of the entire Catholic Church to John. And how we act, how we behave, is how John starts to think of Catholics even subconsciously. And because of that, because we are kind of representatives for the faith as Catholics, it is essential that we are willing to defend our faith and do so in a kind, loving, and calm manner. Because we can't keep let the society getting away get away with thinking that they can just stomp all over us, make fun of us, make jokes about us, call us hateful, call us bigoted, when it is all not true. Listen, I'm not saying every Catholic is a perfect behavior and every Catholic is great. I'm sure that, that there are, right, all Catholics sin, okay? Just because we're Catholic doesn't mean we're above anybody else. And there are Catholics who I'm sure are, are, are hateful and rude. But to then associate that with all of Catholicism is pretty messed up. And I want to acknowledge in Joshua Bassett's comments, um, there were 
a lot of positives, okay? There were a lot of positive comments being like, hey guys, like, what is this? Why are the comments so hateful? Um, God bless. This is great, Joshua. And that's important to acknowledge too, right? Because it's not like all of society. It's just anti-Catholic, right? But the media, Hollywood, they want you to think that all of society is anti-Catholic. And it's important that we understand that and that we are willing to stand up to that. So now that the topic is done, do y'all know what it is time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is Saint Marguerite Bourgeois. I believe I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. It's French, so... Maybe. Anyway, St. Marguerite Bourgeois, um, her feast day is coming up here in just a couple days, and she was a 17th century saint um, who many Canadians know because she's um, initially from France but traveled to the New World, um, to Canada, and kind of uh, had an adopted home there. Now, from a very young age, she was very religious, and as a result, she wanted um, to make many communities of religious sisters. So, so she started one, um, and it was the community of Notre Dame, which was uh, established in 1676. Um, it did not make formal religious profession until 1698. Um, but it was the congregation of, of Notre Dame, um, and she also established a school for Indian children with some help from friends. She was working a ton. But this didn't come without um, pushback, right? Pushback from the, the people there, but also pushback from church authority. And then she also faced poverty and illness during this entire thing. It didn't matter. She didn't stop. She was 100% dedicated to anything she did. And listen to this. At the age of 69 years old, that is, I'm going to say super old, that's up there, okay? And um, she walked from Montreal to Quebec um, in order to establish another community of sisters that an archbishop wanted over there. Guys, that's not, that's 158 miles of walking at age 69, and she did all of it out of the kindness of her heart. By the time she died in 1700, people called her the mother of the colony, okay? That, that's how she was known, because she was so influential there and really, really made an impact and, and founding everything that she did. So when we're talking about um, being proud of our faith, willing to really sacrifice, right? Because that's what defending our faith is about. It, it's about sacrifice, and it's about enduring that sacrifice lovingly. Um, and when we're talking about that, St. Marguerite Bourgeois, again, I almost positive that last name is correct, um, we could always look through her for help. St. Marguerite, pray for us. So before you guys click off this video, I'm not just a YouTuber, YouTuber, I'm also a Catholic speaker, so if you want to book me to come and speak at your church, school, men's group, women's group, youth group, parish, you name it, um, please reach out to us directly at kineticcatholicministries at gmail.com or go to the website kineticcatholic.com, click the contact us page and reach out to us from there, and then we will plan details um, from there. Also, please check out the website in general. So many awesome things you can do on there, including your very own Kinetic Catholic merch, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when we come out with a new video. Please like the video. Please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have for future videos. Please um, check the description for all three of our social medias. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description down below. Once again, I hope that you guys um, are having an absolutely wonderful um, Tuesday so far, a wonderful start to your new year. Let me know how it is going in the comment section down below. Please share this channel and video with your friends and family. Make sure that they know about Kinetic Catholic. This was Keenan of Kinetic Catholic Ministries. I will see you all next week. And hi, Brielle.